Welcome back for another episode. Today I'm going to be installing my cupboards. So that's the uh, cupboards that are going to go down the length of the van, as well as the front cupboard. So you can see I've already had a little head start there. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I'm finding it a little bit complicated. So I'm going to show you the processes involved in how I'm getting it, trying to get it as accurate as I can, as level as I can. Okay, so to start with, I want to make sure that my cabinet is level. And because vans just aren't level in general and I'm working on this van on a sloped hill, I can't use a spirit level. So what I've actually done to figure out my exact level here is I've run technically a string line. I've used fishing line. I've run little screws from one side to the other here. And I've run a little fishing line across this. And I've done the exact same on this side. So you can see it was a bit low here. I had to put it down and there's a string line. And then what I've done is I've marked the exact point across where I know this is going to be the same on both sides. And I've run a string line. You probably can't see, but there is a fishing line between my fingers there from one side to the other. And that means when I do my templates, so I'm going to be doing cardboard templates in here, I'm going to be able to measure the exact place where they're all going to end up. So hopefully it's all going to be square and level. All right, so the first thing I want to do here, because this is going to be the end of my cupboard, is I'm going to put in my plywood end piece, I suppose I'm going to call it. And that's just going to house another set of cupboards in there as well. Where I'm going to have some pop open cupboards like this. And then there's a whole bunch of storage space above the cab. So the way I'm doing that is I've just done a whole bunch of cardboard templates. And I'm about to take it out now and cut it out. And hopefully if I've got it all right, it's all going to come out nice and neat. Alright, so what I've done now is I've just traced my template out on a big piece of plywood. So I've marked it out and now I'm going to cut it out jigsaw. If I cut these at a 90 degrees like you normally would with a jigsaw, it's not going to fit because the roof is on an angle. So I'm going to have to cut my angles the same as the roof to get that nice, clean, tight fit. So I'm going to cut it all out first at a 90 and then I'm going to go around it again and cut it at that angle with the jigsaw. Okay, so I've cut out my template. So now what I gotta do is cut out the angle what I said before, is I've got my jigsaw and I've changed the angle on it. So when I cut now, it's gonna cut an angle, but I'll still have the same side on the facing side, if that makes sense. And then there will be just a 45 angle cut into it. So then when I push it up against my van, the walls and the contours won't stop it from being flush anymore. I'll show you what I mean, I'll cut it out and then I'll show you in the van and it'll all make sense, hopefully. So this fits nice that I've done that angled cut on the edges, all the edges except for this bottom edge. See, because the, the walls of the van are actually like not straight, they're like this. So if I would have just left it as a 90 degree cut, it wouldn't have fit. Okay, it's in. I did actually make a pretty big stuff up when I was cutting this thing out. I did have my template uh, basically back to front when I was stenciling it out. So there was a massive gap on this side. So what I ended up doing, and probably something I don't talk about as much as when I make my mistakes, how I fix them, because making mistakes is all along the lines of when you're building vans and working with wood and how you can fix them and make them totally unnoticeable is where your skill comes in. So all I just did was cut a chunk out and then I've just gone and screwed and glued it in from the back side and then I was able to cut out my stencil again. And because this is all going to be painted and sanded, you will never see that that was even done. So that saves, you know, 
getting a whole new piece of plywood and cutting it out again and I was able to do a much nicer job on the ceiling. So I will marry this up with a bit of uh, no more gaps when I do come to paint it and finish it off. So similarly to what I've just done above the cab, for my cabinets I've made four templates. Because my roof kind of isn't at the same contours throughout the whole sections, my roof lining does actually do a bit of a curve and so does my walls so it's not quite flat. All the templates are different slightly. So I've used that string line method to get them all exactly ending up in the exact same corner and I think that's the most important part. So it's gonna look flat and straight from I guess the outside. So I've just cut out these four templates that I've named them. So two are actually the same. The first one, two and three, and then the last one. And I've traced them out onto some plywood. So I'm gonna cut them now on the table saw, and then I'm gonna test fit them and see if they work. And then I'll join them together with some strips of wood. And that'll be the frame of my cabinet. And then I'll be able to put the cabinet faces on and have everything ready. Next I began making the cupboards for the cabinet by first stripping down some 2x4s into 40mm wide by 15mm thick strips. I'm using the table saw and a table saw sled with a 45 degree jig to cut the frames out. I'm using a trim router and a guide to route a groove in the frames to mount a 7mm plywood backing. I'm using flush mounted butt hinges and a hinge jig I made up to route the groove for the hinges. Next I'm installing these caravan push lock latches to keep the doors closed. I needed to make a small wooden spacer as the adjustable button latch locks were still too long for the strips of timber I cut down. Next is to install the gas struts, which will keep the cupboard doors open by themselves.
So the paint I'm using is a two-part, I suppose. I'm using an acrylic Torbman's Easy Coat. This is my undercoat sealer. So because I'm using a lot of filler, like poly filler, and also my wood filler, and because the wood is quite grainy with a lot of knots in it, if I didn't use an undercoat, I would use a lot of top coats to get rid of that grain and to hide all that stuff. So the undercoat's really good. And then my final coat is this Dulux Wash and Wear Semi-Gloss. Semi-Gloss is really gonna throw all that light around in the van when it's sunny. So I think I got a good combination of the two. And I'm putting that on with a high gloss roller. So one of the foam rollers in between every coat, I'm just lightly sanding it with 400 grit sandpaper. And then I'm washing it with a rag, getting all that dust off. It's coming out really nice. I'm doing one more coat of this and then I've got to paint the van and then I'm going to stick it in and it's going to start looking really nice. All right. So I've just finished sanding down my walls with pretty much the fine grit sandpaper, 120. It's just taking me like, hours to get all these holes out nice and smooth and what i'm going to do now it's called raising the grain so i've just got a bottle of water and i'm going to spray it lightly on all the wood that i want to sand down and paint it's literally going to raise the grain off the wood so it's going to come up with all these little spiky bits off the wood that means that when that dries i can sand it down again because what happens is when I go to paint it without doing that, the paint will actually raise the grain and it'll start looking and feeling rough again. Okay, the water's dried now and you can't really see it that well, but you can feel it like little spiky bits on the wood. It's not very smooth anymore. And that's the grain being raised out off the wood. So now I'm just gonna hit it with the sander again and that'll be super smooth. Okay, I've just finished sanding down now the final coat and it is really smooth like you can really tell the difference um so i'll do all the undercoat for the walls and then i'll come back and do the final top coat which is my semi-gloss white So I stopped filming about halfway through making this overhead cabinet because I ended up losing my voice and I couldn't really explain anything. So I just built it. So I'll just go through how I built it. So pretty much where I got to when I was filming it, I was cutting out these templates. So I've got the four templates cut out. That was awesome. And then the way I put it together was pretty simply. I just put a rail, a two by uh, one, rail all the way across and then all the way at the back so I cut out this little corner here and then I did the same I needed some extra port to kind of bolt it to the walls so I put a, a 7 mil ply strip all the way across so I could screw it into the wall like this and then on the edges so I got where I joined my cupboard doors I just cut a 20 by 40 mil strip in half and then glued them. So that's only just a little square piece there and there's another square piece there and that's my ply in the middle. So we join the two, you got that gap. But at the end here, because I had to put a small, a smaller door on this side, just obviously because the roof slopes down like this. So I put a, a solid piece of ply up here but you still get quite a bit of space up inside there. The door's just a bit smaller. And then underneath, I've just put seven mil ply and just screwed it into all the studs that I built. I was gonna put 12 mil ply underneath and I actually did cut out all the bits and I realized how heavy it was and how much it didn't really need it. Seven mil ply is gonna be heaps for what I'm actually gonna be putting up here, mainly clothes, so it's never gonna be heavy. And even if it was heavy, it'll still handle it with the amount of screws I put in there and I could not be happy with how this turned out. It looks so amazing. Everything's worked out really well. I've got in my push button locks and my gas struts that hold everything up. So you can see I'm gonna wire in some lights in here <clears throat> and some lights down here, or maybe that's for a projector screen um, or a 12 volt fan that I might mount here. But very, very happy with how this has turned out. Thank you so much for watching.
If you liked this video, remember to hit the thumbs up below and subscribe to see more videos like this.